This offense is the best defense. My dad used to tell me that. He coached <laughs> basketball. And I, be, I couldn't agree more. I much prefer the offense. And so you say, you know, let's talk about the, the mother. And you start throwing some things up because now you've studied it and you know that the scars in the mother are unbelievable. The increase in alcoholism and drugs and suicide, it's unbelievable. You talk to some of those women who've had abortions who are now traveling this country trying to share their story and say, this is not just some alternative. And you find out, my golly, this is a terrible, a terrible procedure all around. It's never in the best interest of anyone. You learn these things. You learn about the increased risk of cancer, breast cancer possibly, depending on the person's family history. These are things you find out. And now you learn more and you become more passionate about it and you become more informed and you go back in and back in and you talk to your pro-choicers and you start feeling like you've got this down. Do the same with immigration if that's what you choose. Do the same with war. I don't care what the issue is. The key is that you start debating. Debate's where it's at. They may call you names. They may make you feel badly. You might be intimidated. You might be hesitant. And then those moments is when you say, thank you, Lord, because you know you're not ready. And to be a leader, you have to be ready for that kind of intimidation, that kind of pressure. You have to learn what it's like to go through the firestorm. How many times have I been on television? The left is firing questions at me. The television camera is live. And they hit a good one. And they say to myself, oh, that was an excellent point. Hmm. Well, because I'm the host of the show, I can quickly change the topic. <laughs> but I can guarantee you that I'm out there thinking, dang, they win that round, you know? Well, that's how I learn. Maybe I then say, you know, I'm going to change my position a little bit on this issue. That's a very valid point. Or I might say that's their best one, but I think this one trumps it. I think I'm still solid. Now, I have a bit of an advantage when I get in caught in those positions. Before I get home, I have my big brother on the phone giving me all the details of where the argument should go from there. And so I can figure it out and learn quickly. But so can you by just talking to others. The key is now you are being, you have a voice. You are more than just someone sitting in a seat. You're somebody that's moving the dialogue, talking to people, getting excited about the issues, finding out what you believe, and learning that you will let no one, no one, tell you what you can and cannot say. Because that's who you are. And if you're going to be a leader, you must find that kind of boldness. That kind of courage to be out in front and not to be afraid of being different or having being differing in opinion with those in your midst. And once you get more confident, you get a sense of humor about it. So it doesn't have to be always this harsh, argumentative approach. You can have a sense of humor, but you can be confident that if they come after you, you can go right back. And then you'll decide once you have knowledge and once you're accustomed to being out there you will see, you can pick and choose then. You can pick and choose where you want to go, where the difference is going to be. And you know, I tell those who are in college campuses who claim to be pro-life, get to the position where you can be in a classroom. You're sitting in that classroom, and you're waiting. I don't give it to math class. You're waiting to somebody make some remark about Roe v. Wade or abortion or anything related. And you get your hand up. You're not even sure what you're going to say. And you make a pro-life statement Yours, not mine, yours, whatever it be. And you say, every time a child's life is taken. And you know what? That's leadership because you don't know who is in that classroom, who's never heard this side, who sees this person, a very strange person who would bring this point up in the middle of all these people who disagree with them. And this must be a very nervous type of position to be in. And they make that statement and it's bold and it's passionate. And they respect you for it. And you don't know. A month, a week, a year, two years, they might be forced to make a decision. And they don't hear much about the other side, but they remember what you said. It gives them pause. You could save a life. I can tell you, you can save a life by speaking out, but you will save no lives by being quiet. You cannot change the direction of this nature, this nation, by being quiet, by not speaking. That's what leadership is about. That's what we need more of. And that's what the people who come back to this town are supposed to be about. 
a vibrant debate on the issues. Not, oh, we can't talk about that one. That's a back burner. Oh my gosh, not that one either. What can we talk about? Well, let's come into an agreement, the Democrats and Republicans. We'll talk about taxes. You know, you say a little tax cut, and I say a big tax cut. Now, there's a bold, bold debate, but we won't talk about those other ones because the people in the media cost names when we do that. They cannot tell us what it is, what issues we should raise, and how we should raise them. I heard from the White House the other day, the White House press secretary, warning conservatives how we talk about a Supreme Court nominee. Nobody tells me how I talk about a Supreme Court nominee. Who, what are they, threatening us? And if we don't, oh, I'm real worried? <laughs> kind of nonsense. As soon as he said that, I said, oh, I've got to really get tough now. I mean, come on. It's the American spirit. Let me just close by telling you that this is what it is to be an American. We have freedoms other nations don't have. We have a spirit about us where we stand tall in times of trouble, that we do lead naturally. Don't let them take that away from us. As conservatives particularly, we have to step back into the fray and start to fight those things we believe in and not let anyone tell us this was okay to say this way but don't say it this way and oh my gosh they're so mean-spirited what do you think they're gonna say they call you names because they do not wish to debate the issue the facts they call you names to quiet you because then they win without the debate but once the debate gets going the American people agree with us how many times have I heard as I've traveled people thanking me and my brother concurs it? You know what the number one thing they say after that? For saying it. Thank you for saying it. Americans unrepresented across this country because the two parties don't have the guts to get out there and say what it is they believe and try to move the country in that kind of direction. Nope. They have folded the tents. And it's time to clean them out and start bringing back real Americans to come into this city from the left and from the right and to start having healthy debates about where this country should go and not to be manipulated by those who would use the politics of intimidation. We need leaders. We need true leaders. And it's time for you all to step up to the plate because we need you now. And we can't be waiting for any college degrees or any kind of law school or professional or condos or cars, okay? We need you to start now to be the kind of leaders in your classrooms, in your offices, in your neighborhoods, to start exercising that great American spirit of being someone who believes in something firmly, passionately, and is willing to say it. Thank you all very, very much.